welcome to Good News Rhode Island, the show about Rhode Island and the people and places and events that make Rhode Island a great place to live, that build our communities. I want to first thank our crew today for all the work that they do. I want to thank Vern Stromberg, Emily Wiskett, Aline Moore, Will Anderson, and Will, Bill Carpenter. I want to thank them for all the work they do so faithfully and so well. Thank you. There are often people who are behind the scenes, just like them, who are working in our communities. And we never see them unless we're in a particular situation. And then they come into our lives as strangers. You become friends for a little bit, and then you leave, and they go on with their work. But we don't usually think about them that much. So today we have some people from Bradley Hospital. And they're here to say, the work that they're telling us about, the work they're doing, and the ways that they make connections with the communities around us, the way that they care for children up through age 21, and the way that they send those children, young adults, out to do better work in the world and to be more normalized in the world. So welcome. I want to welcome John Peterson, who's here as the business manager, and we will find out why he's here uh, in a few minutes, and Megan Gubata, who's here, um, who is running a program called Healing Arts. She is a director of Healing Arts at Bradley Hospital, and I want to welcome you both, and thank you for what you're doing uh, for the children of, really, of all of Rhode Island, I'm hearing, and mm -hmm. I didn't realize that, so we'll talk in a minute. John, you came to Bradley Hospital as uh, somebody who's interested in finance, obviously, uh, but you decided to work in the hospital. How did you make that decision? Well, it happened in the, the late 1990s. I uh, was switching jobs and uh, just kind of happened to fall into healthcare. And I worked at Rhode Island Hospital for a couple of years. And then ultimately, I um, fortunately was uh, in the late 90s, I got into Bradley Hospital as a business manager. And I also worked at Rhode Island Hospital in the Department of Psychiatry at the same time. I found that um, Bradley was really, I felt at home at Bradley. I felt really comfortable. I was, and I, all the clinicians that I work with made me feel really comfortable. As a finance person, they respect what I do. But also, I felt that in my role, I could help um, ultimately help out the children and the families by providing, um, we could increase staffing if we have viable programs and um, also and this healing arts program incidentally uh, started a few years ago with Megan and I because we met and we were able to work out some grants together and um, this is how we get it all things started. I could tell you a little bit about Bradley. We're located in East Providence, Rhode Island. Um, we have a very full continuum of care. so. In other words, we have inpatient um, hospital services. We have 60 licensed beds, and we can flex up to a higher number than that. We have partial hospital services uh, that you should be aware of, everybody should be aware of, where kids come during the day, and then they receive services, uh, psych services during the day, and then they, they go back home. We have over 70 children a day in these programs. So in that program, that's a very growing area for us okay. also. And then we also have four group homes in the community where we have eight kids in each home on approximately eight beds. So we have 32 beds, and mostly for kids with autism and other uh, developmental disabilities. And in the community, people may not be aware that we also have a significant amount of kids in school-based programs. So we have over 400 kids in school-based programs. And in addition to this, we have some home-based services for about 20 children, um, very young children with autism. And we also have um, significant outpatient services that are growing all the time. Right now we have about 15 to 20,000 visits per year in outpatient. And that range can be for very young children to some young adults are also receiving services. And it's important to know too that we're very integrated with Hasbro Children's Hospital and Rhode Island Hospital. The, the full continuum goes through the hospital because we have kids with medical and psych issues. That, so we, we're very integrated, our staff and our programs are integrated with Hasbro. So I think it's important to know all that. So. Well, thank you. We may have to unpack a little of that as we go <laughs> along. But uh, thank you. Um, you're clearly um, converted. You clearly mm -hmm. believe in Bradley Hospital, which I think is a great thing. But you do connect with the community, and that's a very important thing for us to learn. Um, Megan, you are an artist, is that right? I'm an art therapist at Bradley. Um, so partially artist, partial psychologist, clinician as well. That comes along with that. So you had training in both? In both, yes. yes. Uh -huh. And so you knew that somehow you wanted to do something with 
psychology as well as art? Yes, I went to school, both undergrad and grad school, for art therapy and mental health counseling. Mm -hmm. So I already had a passion for art and my own personal mm -hmm. growth and dealing with trials and tribulations through my life, as well as the psychological component that I was highly interested in in an education setting. So I went to school for that, and I knew I had a, a niche to work with children. So I went to grad school in Boston. I got the job at Bradley, fortunately, right out of grad school. And I started as a part-time art instructor. I wasn't even a licensed art therapist yet or a licensed clinician. Um, and I worked my way to full-time status and formed connections because Bradley, again, is such a small, close-knit, supportive hospital that I was able to um, express my thoughts and ideas regarding alternative modalities for healing and therapeutic um, qualities that kids possess but they can't necessarily verbally communicate mm -hmm. and I was able to connect with John and kind of brainstorm ideas of how we can um, provide therapeutic services for kids that not necessarily just comes from medication or talk therapy but other forms and skills like dance movement art music drama um, that we could bring to the children and then that way they in turn would have new skills to bring with them in the community. I want to ask a question and it's kind of very very general mm -hmm. but that is if you put a box of paints and paper in front of a child or some crayons may be more usable or if you put on music mm -hmm. um, or if you uh, do drumming or something Children will naturally respond to that. Isn't that true? And suddenly they learn something different about themselves. Yes, I think naturally children are intuitive and they're very curious um, at the same time. Not every child does like dance or art or music, but when exposed in a very supportive environment and when there's therapeutic goals that revolve around that, um, and staff are very supportive and clinicians. I think the children do feel the children of the hospital do feel invited to try something different and know that there's no judgment. Um, with that said, I know from experience working with the children as well as all of these modalities that come into the hospital that the acuity of the unit tends to minimize, which means the safety of the unit is it's highly secured. Kids become less anxious. They um, their happy, like confidence and just aura of happiness increases when they try different things and new skills. Because again, not every child can express themselves verbally and when they're in an intense psychiatric hospital, sometimes that is intimidating. And you, put, you provide these kids with different materials that they've never used or a different modality or even a different person coming onto the floor um, is intriguing to kids and they're more willing to try something new. But you're, you're buying into this really native ability mm. that humanity has to respond um, to uh, the process of creativity. Yes, yes. And many kids have that. I think it's just finding in each individual that, we, that are exposed to the healing arts program, it's finding what their niche is and what they do like doing. And then we roll with that on the different programs. And that's why we try and continuously provide these services for the kids so that they can continue to experience. It's, it's not often that, um, it's not easy to find funding for this kind of a program. No question. And um, it's not often that people understand the connection between something like this, which has people, um, children's ideas on it, mm -hmm. like strength, love yourself, live free, um, it's not often that people see a connection between that and healing. So how do you look for funding for this kind of a um, altruistic process? So this is, it's really important to get buy-in from the staff, and meaning the clinical staff and, my, and, and the administrative staff at the hospital. You know, there's no question when this program first started to develop at Bradley, there were some skeptics. Uh, Megan can certainly tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to run into that. But what we had to do was we were very fortunate that our nurse manager, the director, the CNO at Bradley Hospital, is a big supporter of Healing Arts, which is a really important, first of all, to have that support. Then what we did um, to get things started, I, we could start right from the beginning. Uh, we got a RISCA grant, which is critical. It wasn't a huge dollar grant. Okay, that's Rhode Island State Council, State Council, Council the for the Arts. Arts yeah. Yeah, that was very important to help get us started because we, 
we had a joint um, collaborative grant with um, Peace Love Studios, and we were able to get them to come in every Monday for seven hours on Mondays for a long period of time. Um, without that grant, I think it would have been very difficult to get things rolling. And you'd have to agree with me, Megan, that was probably one of the most that critical I would say would kick, that kicked off the healing arts as a sustainable um, element in Bradley's eye because the same thing, it is very hard to sell when you have a clinical staff or administration who's not aware of these different modalities. You know, if the community artists are coming in and they're not necessarily an appropriate staff or, a or have the therapeutic knowledge to deal with different mental illness, developmental disabilities, um, trauma. So it's very difficult to find an individual or a group of individuals that can work with kids and adolescents in that setting. Um, but as we went on, um, I decided it would be pertinent to the program to have concrete evidence of how these programs are impacting our children and how they're impacting the staff. Mm -hmm. So I created a survey for children specifically, and I created a survey for staff specifically to fill out. That way they can correlate between the two of how kids are feeling before an intervention and after an intervention. And it's coming strictly from the kids, as simple as circling a face, whether a sad face, a happy face, a frustration a frustrated looking face, a confident face. All they had to do was circle a face before and after. And there's so much that comes out of just those two marks on a piece of paper. And this has been going on for about a year and a half. And the data that we've collected is amazing. And I think that component of bringing it to the clinicians and the administrative staff speaks volumes because you know, we're seeing these kids in action, we don't know necessarily how they feel. And again, the happiness element, the confidence, um, the frustration tolerance increased immensely, especially after all of these workshops. And the staff are noticing the acuity. Again, that safety component. Kids are less likely to harm themselves. The milieu, which is where all the kids are together with the staff and in that community of the programs and units, minimizes after for example, a Peace Love Studios art workshop or a dance movement um, session or a Trinity Repertory improv group. We need to back up and talk about Peace Love and mm -hmm. Trinity Rep, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so Peace Love Studio is in Pawtucket, and it, it is in the Artiste Village. Mm -hmm. And they are a group of people who work already with kids on an outpatient basis. Um, in the community, mm -hmm. and they're coming to you, and somehow you have linked arms and grants to mm -hmm. help them to come right. in and to help you with your program. And mm -hmm. we're fortunate; they've um, they've also got grants too to help to help this out as a, from a collaborative point of view. Because we have so many programs too, we have to support. Um, so they they've been helpful on their end to get grants. Um, they're doing a fantastic job, and they and I think uh, that. The teamwork that we have together has worked fantastic, and uh, they've, they're in a beautiful place in Pawtucket, their studio too. So it's uh, you know th it's a great opportunity for our kids to take advantage of their services. And Trinity Rep, um, I wouldn't think Trinity Rep would come into a hospital. <laughs> I I never cease to be amazed at the connections though. Uh, Trinity Rep, so some of their actors come in and work with the kids. Yes. Um, wow. One of our one of the. Um, employees of Trinity um, comes in and runs improvisational groups with the adolescent population. I'm laughing because it's funny how some of these things generate and a lot of them have been in John's office sitting and saying what could these kids benefit from? What types of services? And he immediately said well how about Trinity Rep? And we called immediately just just impulsively to see what they could do. Um, we knew about their reputation for working in the community, working with many kids. They do a sensory integration um, Christmas carol that we did know about. And we said, well, I'm sure we could get somebody in here. And um, we were able to connect with one of the um, employees. And she, again, she runs improvisational groups every week on the adolescent inpatient unit, which is a two unit, 30 bed, um, program and she goes to both weekly and it's amazing. It's amazing what she does. And as a non-clinician, I think from my point of view, I've, I've observed these groups on many occasions um, and what, she, what she's able to do in, in a 45 minute period is amazing because the kids, some of the kids are like in the corner, there might be, uh, you know, 10 kids, 10 to 15 kids um, that are in the group 
And in the beginning, maybe only a few kids come up and volunteer to do some acting. But what happens is she gets the kids transformed within a very short period of time where they're up laughing, um, participating in acting, and having a very good time. These are kids that may not have been smiled or been laughed in a long period of time. So it's really rewarding to see how um, the impact that it's had. I, I can't imagine if we had to take something like that away, what would happen? Because the, the services that are provided are just fantastic. Um, and she's, incidentally, I, could, I can speak for uh, our partners over at Hasbro. Uh, there's a Hasbro Partial Hospital Program. She just did an event at Trinity with actors from Trinity um, that was fantastic, um, related to the Hasbro Partial Program that uh, was well attended. It was a fundraiser, and it was all about the stories of the kids that, uh, and the successes they've had in their programs over there. So we work very closely with Hasbro. Um, as a hospital, and even with our healing arts programs. We've gotten some of our key people from Hasbro, um, uh -huh. so it's an important piece to us, our puzzle. Wow, it's so neat to know that these, these things are being woven uh, behind, uh, behind closed doors, <laughs> essentially, um, but yet they're bringing such good. Now, the dance program, we mm -hmm. haven't talked about that. What mm -hmm. about the dance program? So the dance movement program um, was, again, uh, created in basically a coffee shop with a previous employer of Bradley who started off as a milieu uh, therapist who worked directly on the floor with the kids, who was a dancer herself, had training in dance. Um, she left Bradley for a period of time to run her own dance studio and just our connection of being friends outside of Bradley. We were sitting down at coffee one day and she was like, you know, I'd really like to come back to Bradley. I miss the kids. I miss working in that setting. And the light bulb clicked for me, and I said, hey, how would you feel about running dance movement groups? Knowing her background already in the psychiatric mm -hmm. setting, knowing her personal and professional development, um, we were able to bring her in. And just to say how we bring an artist or, you know, an artist from the community in is we, we you know, listen to the clinicians and what they would like for their kids. So whether they're, they're wanting movement or music or, you know, drama, we then bring, like, dance movement into a unit or a program for a one-time workshop to and see how to it see works. how it goes. Uh -huh. And we get the feedback from the kids and the staff. And if it goes well, we continue. Um, and that's, knock on wood, that's been positive, and everybody's come back after the first try. But that's how dance movement started. She started on the adolescent unit. You know, again, mixed feelings initially, a lot of excitement, though, from the staff who wanted to see how the kids would react to dance movement. Because again, you have those introverted kids who can't even right. look you in the eye and give and you eye contact. Dance is one of these taboos yes. Yes. in teenage life, yep. right? So I've, she started. I've, it's an important thing to note, too, that all, these, all the, the artisans that come in to the community they, they um, tend to have to, they all have to go through an orientation with Bradley. Um, mm -hmm. what, what they can do a trial, but once they are, if they're going to come on a continuing basis, they go through an orientation. So they understand so our it's patients. Kind of and, yeah, and they have to do. understand all the, the procedures that you have to go by to work with our patients. So it makes them feel comfortable and understand the environment we're working in. Mm -hmm. We've kind of gotten into all this without talking about the, the mission of, the, of Bradley Hospital. Maybe one of you could say what the mission is. Well, I, I'd say I, I, our healing arts brochure is probably one of the better um, items to read. It says, Healing the Hearts and Minds of Children and Their Families, Bradley Hospital. I think that, that kind of answers it right there. Um, and our goal is to, to work with the children at, all the way up to 21, as Megan said, so, and their families. So it's really important um, that Bradley is a, a vital resource, and it's not known nationwide. Um, as a children's psychiatric hospital and outpatient services that we provide. But the primary word is healing, mm -hmm. um, and the primary word is hearts and minds. Um, so it's really a holistic program, it sounds like to me. I mean, uh, so you are also dealing with medical doctors and mm -hmm. um, others who are looking at other facets of the children's lives. Mm -hmm. And that's. That's, I think, where we get the support to continue to run this program is from the docs and from the administration and from other clinicians, is that they're seeing the impact that these children are, are having just with their positive experiences and learning to communicate in other ways. And 
seeing as this program is slowly but surely increasing, the, the goal behind this as well is to connect with the community artists and to give them praise for the fact that they're outside contractors mm -hmm. coming in to work with our kids. They do work in other settings within the community, but this is also a facet for kids once they exit the hospital, they can go to these sites like Shri Yoga Studio, which is based out of Pawtucket. Again, Peace Love Studio, Trinity Repertory, kids are more than welcome that are within the hospital, that they can go and work with them outside after outpatient, after inpatient, outpatient, just as a community um, member. If you have listened to this program and you wonder how you might get involved with these programs, then probably trying these nonprofits, uh, taking your child to these nonprofits, even if the child is not enrolled in Bradley Hospital, um, would be a, a way to start mm -hmm. um, and to have this kind of healing. I think what you're saying to me is this, um, possibly there is a lot of healing in the arts that we haven't given credit to. And I'm wondering about, for example, the next person who's coming here to be interviewed is uh, the Poet Laureate of Rhode Island. And he goes all the time to an assisted living facility and help them to publish a book of their poetry. And I know that there's some people here, even on our crew, who go to the ACI, to the prisons, mm -hmm. and they help people to write poetry. And actually, they really love it, and they really enjoy it, and the, the poetry that comes out of there. The healing that takes place, maybe in our society, we are completely backwards, and we I know we need science, and I know we need math, but what if in the schools the kids had this kind of option mm -hmm. to have um, I don't know, segments of gym programs that were all different arts so that they could experiment themselves. No matter how healthy you are, you still need the arts. Mm -hmm. And I think that's maybe, maybe a next step for you, that you all could become um, um, advocates for art in the schools mm -hmm. and for a, a multiplicity of arts, not just um, sculpture or whatever it is, but, right. but really giving the kids a wide range of options. Right. And I think that's the nice thing with the organizations we work with is that many of them are already in the school systems, but again, how many people know that they're in there providing mm -hmm. services? I think that is another question. And how many schools have the funds to be able to do that? Right. And the fact that you can work with the schools and bring funds to them, essentially, um, is really important as well. I think an example would be Sri Yoga. If you go to their website, you can see how they're helping school systems. They, you know, they've done, you know, they do fundraisers, et cetera. They give, and they can get some. In some cases, they can get discounts to schools, but they provide yoga services in, to schools, which is a great way for children to relax. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if they do it exactly in a gym environment, but they do this with the kids. Um, and I think some of the kids come back to their studio or they go to um, the schools themselves. So they're really After ongoing. school programs, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. You have a calendar here that shows us some of the art that the kids have done. Um, yes. Maybe we could look at that. This sure. is Bradley Hospital's calendar. I assume it's for sale, but I'm not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> um, but I want to say you might want it for the art. This is just, I'm going to just leaf through and show you some of the art some of the kids have done. Now, these are programs that could have lasted months or could have lasted just a few days, mm -hmm. depending on how long the child was hospitalized. And you see they're all very hopeful, which maybe is what you chose particularly. But mm -hmm. Yeah, all the pieces of artwork were created by um, our children and adolescent mostly inpatient and partial hospitalization kids over the last six months. Well, I have to say you have great colors. <laughs> there you go. Well, it also and shows look, the potential of kids and what yes, they can do with different materials. It does. I mean, this looks like Corita Kent. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so your work there is to um, look at the whole child. And I have, at least your brochure says, you want to explore and express children's thoughts, cope with traumatic experiences, which is a really important way to, I mean, using art is a really important way to, um, what, detoxify um, someone's negative experience, become self-aware, improve, improve social skills, increase self-esteem. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, some of our core goals is to, um, you know, frustration tolerance techniques, coping skills, um, just the therapeutic value of expressing yourself, learning a new skill, those as basic as that, that is one of our mission statements for this program. Um, increase concentration and focus. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting that the arts help to increase concentration and focus. Mm -hmm. Is that something that the doctors agree with? <laughs> I think when they see it firsthand, yes. Um, it depends again on the group and the kids that are participating. Some of our dance movement groups in particular are high energy, um, you know, music is very loud. At the same time, some people might think that's overstimulating. The kids though are highly focused in following a direction for 45 minutes. If they can stay safe and follow direction, whether or not that stimulus is really, really high, some kids do find that relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do our yoga groups, that is there to minimize some stress. Um, you know, other um, facets of that would be that they play music, they do art integrated in their yoga too. So you're mm. getting the multimodal piece of yoga group sometimes. Mm. But it's again that high focus, stress reduction, anxiety reducing and techniques. I might, and one might add as being an administrator too, and the clinicians, one thing they're looking for is outcome studies, which I know Megan is working on, and that's a mm -hmm. critical element to any services that you provide, you have to prove that what you're doing is works. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that she's doing um, research on that, and you know, informal research, I guess you would say. Yeah. Yeah. But that's really important. Yeah. What have you, uh, do you have any news Example? you can share with us? No, I, I know. <laughs> um, just from the survey data that I was mentioning before, just staff observation of the milieu of the kids is that we've seen in the past restraints have minimized, holds have minimized, kids, mm -hmm. the incentive to actually um, go to a group is huge with kids. If you, if, so basically, as simple as saying, if you can stay safe, you can go to dance movement. That's all kids need sometimes, just to know, okay, if I want to participate in this extracurricular activity, um, we have a magician that comes on the weekends. Weekends are pretty sometimes stagnant with programming, so that's another thing that kids can look forward to. So we're seeing the acuity go down more, and with the kids, the frustration tolerance and the stress levels minimize and the confidence going up and our happy feelings going up during and after these interventions. I want to thank you both for coming, John and Megan, and for Bradley Hospital and for what it's doing um, for so many children. And I'm wondering what happens when the, the, fac the faculty, the doctors and the nurses start doing these programs. Um, imagine what will happen with the anxiety level going down. Anyway. Thank you for watching Good News Rhode Island. It is really good news, and we hope it's around your corner as well. Thanks for watching.